Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna tell you why I will never consider switching to iOS. My short answer is, iOS is a time-consuming and less productive operating system when compared to Android. I will explain my point of view in eight different categories and I will only focus on the essentials or the things we do every day on our smartphones. So without further ado, let's jump in. Let's start with the most annoying thing about iOS, which is the typing experience. And here I have my Google Pixel to show you why it's hard for me to switch to iOS because of it. First, the lack of the clipboard manager, which is something that's gonna save you a huge amount of time if you have it. For example, on my Android phone, I have this clipboard button, which will give me access to the clipboard manager within the keyboard. And from here, I can save any important links, any important text, or even photos that I want to share with others over time. I can also manage my clipboard manager the way I want. I can unpin whatever text I want and pin it back for future use. I can delete the items I no longer need or unpin them from my clipboard in addition to the ability to take bulk actions like deleting or pinning all of them at the same time. I can also add my own text from the clipboard manager itself without the need to copy this text from another app. And for me to do the same thing on iOS, I found it to be a very long process. And one of the workarounds I thought about is to create a note and put all my important information in it, which requires me to quit the app I'm currently using, open the notes app, locate the one I want, and then copy the text. And after copying the text, I have to go back to the same app and paste the information, then send it. In contrast, I can do the same thing on my Android phone in a couple of seconds by tapping the clipboard button, choose the info I want, and send it. And it doesn't only stop here, but there are a couple of small things that I have on Android that makes it easier for me to type, like the emojis bar at the top, which gives me access to the most recent ones I used, and instead of going to the emojis picker, and also the numbers row that appears all the time, and none of these are available on iOS. Copying and sharing images is also much easier on Android when compared to iOS. So let's say I want to share this image from the web. So when I tap on copy image, I will get a pop-up at the bottom left corner. Tapping on it will allow me to open the markup app, put my highlights, and then tap on share without the need to save this image into my gallery. While on iOS to do the same thing, you have to do a lot of steps. First, you need to save the photo to the gallery and then open the photos app and then open the photo, tap on edit, and then go to the markup app, then apply your edits, tap on done twice, and then tap on share. It doesn't only take a lot more steps to do, but you will also need to delete this photo from your gallery once you are done. And by the way, this clipboard pop-up also appears when you copy text, so you can add or remove whatever you want before sharing, and this is one of the examples. And finally, the voice typing on Android is far more superior when compared to iOS because I can use my voice to edit the text and also send it without the need to touch the keyboard, which is not possible on iOS. And here's one of the examples. This is assistant voice typing on my iPhone. Delete, Google Pixel, clear, undo, send. This is Apple dictation on my iPhone. Delete, clear, undo, send. So overall, the typing experience on iOS is very basic and it lacks a lot of features, but you might need to download a third-party keyboard like Swift Keys that will give you some of the features that the native keyboard is missing, like the numbers row and the clipboard manager. But still, it's not on the same level of the native keyboard on Android. Now we are done with the typing experience and the second problem I face with iOS is the lack of multitasking capabilities and the most important feature I need is the split screen. So let me show you a real life scenario I've been through and how the split screen did help me on my Android phone. I'm currently moving to a new apartment and I called one of the brokers to understand what are the expenses I need to pay before moving. So I wrote those expenses on a piece of paper 
and then took a photo to keep it in my gallery and get back to it later. After a couple of hours, I decided to calculate the total amount of expenses I need to pay and all I had to do on my Android phone is to start a split screen session between Google Photos and the calculator app so I can easily and conveniently add the numbers together. I tried to replicate the same scenario on my iPhone and I found myself taking much longer time. So here is Google Photos with the same exact photo. Then I had to open the calculator app, then move to the photo, type the first number, then move back again to photos and then type the second number and so on and so forth. So you can see how much longer it takes me to finish the same exact thing. A scenario like this doesn't happen to me every day, but when it happens, Android gives me a much better experience that saves me some time. Secondly, overlaying controls on the screen on iOS is very limited. All you can do with it is to get a picture in picture window while playing videos or making a video call, but nothing more. On Android, it will give you far more options. So now I'm using the Zoom app on both devices and when I start screen sharing on both, you will see here that Zoom will give me a lot more controls on the screen. So I can do some annotations by uh, choosing the pen and choose the color and the weight of the line. And then once I'm done with the annotations, I can clear it and apply more annotations again and so on and so forth. So if I'm explaining something to someone in a meeting, that will be much easier on Android. But on iOS, all I'm getting is just a picture in picture window. The third problem I face with iOS devices is in managing notifications as they lack a lot of useful features that I already have on my Android phone. The first one is the status bar that shows me what type of notifications are waiting for me without the need to pull down the notifications shade. But on iOS, there is no indicators. And for me to know what type of notifications I have, I need to pull down the notification center every time. Another amazing feature I have on Android is called Smart Replies. So take a look at this message. Someone sent me, how are you? So it's giving me three different suggestions to reply back to this message without the need to open the app or touch the keyboard. All I have to do is to tap on the option I like and the reply is sent. And from experience, it works great and all the suggestions I'm getting are surprisingly relevant. And because I'm someone who interacts with 21 different employees in my work every day that keep texting me on WhatsApp, a feature like this saves me a lot of time. And it doesn't only suggest replies, but it gives you the option to open the links you received without the need to open the message. So if you want to spend some time alone without interacting with others, but at the same time you are curious to see what you have received, you can simply open the link and reply back to the message whenever convenient. On top of this, the quick actions you get under each message will save you some time as well. So for example, you can just drop a like for this Instagram message and forget about it, or you can mark the message as unread and you are done. In contrast, all you get with iOS is the ability to reply to the message from the notification center, and that's pretty much it. The last thing to talk about in this category is the notifications history. On Android, if you dismissed any notification by mistake, or if you want to check the notifications log to make sure you didn't miss anything, you can simply tap on the history button, and it will show you all the notifications you received for the past 24 hours. While on iOS, if you dismiss the notification, you are done. Now let's talk about the control center on iOS versus the quick settings on Android. And the first annoying thing, it requires a swipe from the right side, while the notification center requires a swipe from the left side. And sometimes I get confused. But on Android, one swipe will give you access to both, which is in my opinion, is much easier and less confusing. The second problem with the control center is the lack of labeling. So if you are new to iOS, you will need more time to get familiar with the options. Sometimes it's very obvious like the flashlight or the camera, but in other cases, it's not. So for example, if you want to know what this button does, you have to tap on it to see what's gonna happen. Now it says dark mode is on. I don't know what this lock button does on iOS, so I have to tap on it. Now it takes me to the guided access and so on and so forth. While on Android, each tile in the quick settings has a label. So if you don't know what this icon means, you can simply read the text without the need to activate the feature to know. On top of this, some of the buttons in the control center will require a haptic touch to get more options like the flashlight brightness slider, but there is no indicator on the button to let you know this. So you either need to try this yourself or research online to know more about your phone or if you found someone else doing it 
you will know about it so you will need more time to get familiar with your phone in contrast android will show you a small arrow in the tiles that have more options to let you know that you can do more and in other cases it's just a toggle like the bluetooth tile for example so you will get familiar with your phone much faster lastly to edit your control center options it requires a lot of steps and you have to do this blindly first you need to go to settings and then locate the control center option and when you go inside you will have a list so you have to uh, organize things like this and then check the changes you have done if you like it or not then add one more control and then change it and then a check and so on and so forth but on android you can do everything on the same page with the tap of a button now i can edit all my tiles by dragging anyone uh, in the options or i can swap their places like this so it's much easier and more convenient in my opinion now let's move on to the home screen and here i have a lot of issues with ios the first one is the very confusing way to organize your apps and widgets on the screen so every time i move an app from one page to another it will push the last icon from the page to the next one so it makes me very confused and i feel i'm exerting a lot of effort to organize my home screen icons the second problem is the inability to place my icons and widgets anywhere on the screen but for example if i want this gap to be at the top instead of being at the bottom i cannot do this but on android i have my clock widget at the top while all my app icons are at the bottom because i enjoy the look of this wallpaper and i need the tree to be visible in the middle of the screen but this is something i cannot do on ios the third issue with ios is the inability to adjust the grid size of your home screen while on android i have plenty of options to choose from i have 5x5 5 4x5 5, 4x4, 3x3, and finally 2x2. Two two. And lastly, the home screen gestures are a bit limited and I think they should be organized in a more productive way. So let me show you what I mean. If you want to access your spotlight search, you're gonna swipe down from the center, which is a nice touch. But if you want to access the app library, you need to drag your finger over the pagination dots until you reach the last page, and then give it one more swipe to access the app library which is too much in my opinion. While on Android with a swipe up from the center, you will get access to both. Here is the full list of apps I have, and I can immediately search anything on my phone using the system-wide search, which is the equivalent to the spotlight search on iOS. And when it comes to accessing your notifications and the quick settings on Android, all you need to do is a swipe down from the center and you will get access to both, which is very easy. But on iOS, you have to stretch your finger all the way to the top left corner to get access to notifications and all the way to the top right corner to get access to the control center. Or you might need to use the reachability gesture to make it a little bit easier, which is too much. Now let's talk about the widgets and here I have three major complaints with iOS. The first one is the inability to interact with them. So let's take this calendar widget as an example. Here it shows the month of May, but if I want to check June or July, I cannot do this from the widget itself, but I have to tap on it to open the calendar app and then move to the year view to check the dates I want. But in contrast, Android widget will give you two arrows at the top that will allow you to check whatever month you want in addition to the ability to add an event right away from the widget itself or tap on any of the days to check them specifically and then interact with them the way you want. So it's much more productive on Android. The second example is the notes. Here I have a widget linked to one of the notes that includes all the stuff I need to purchase from the supermarket. As you see, I can scroll through the full list of items and I can also check or uncheck whatever I want. But on iOS, you cannot do either this or that. First, the widget will show you a limited number of items based on the size because you cannot scroll up or down. And when you tap on any of them, it simply opens the app with the note, but it doesn't offer you any interaction. The second issue is the inability to resize the widgets on the home screen. But I have to remove the widget first and then tap the plus sign again and then locate the app one more time and choose the widget I want or the size I want. Let's say I need this one. So you can see how many steps I took to do such a simple task. While on Android, I can simply drag these handles 
and I resize my widget immediately. And lastly, the number of sizes and the styles you get for each widget on iOS are very limited. All you have here is the small, medium, and large size, and all of them use pretty much the same design. But on Android, you have much more flexibility when it comes to the size, and when you change it, you will get also different designs to choose from, which is more dynamic. Next, we have the virtual assistants. And I found Siri to be useless most of the time because it usually gives me web results instead of answering the questions I'm asking. And here is one of the examples. How to save electricity. Here's what I found. How to save electricity. Here is information from Energy Saving Trust. So you can see the difference. And we finally made it to the last category. And here I'm going to talk about some of the random things I always don't like about iOS. And the first one is the volume controls. On Android, I press the volume rockers, then the ellipses. And here I have a slider for the call volume, the ring and notification, and alarm. But on iOS, to do the same thing, you have to go to settings. And from settings, you locate sound and haptics. And here you have only one slider for the ringtone and alert volume, which will also impact your alarm volume. So if you want to have a different volume level for your alarm, you cannot do this on iOS. Number two is the app specific settings are located under the system settings. While it sounds like a logical solution, but it's time consuming in most cases. And one of the examples I have is the camera. Let's say you want to change the video file format or add a grid to the viewfinder. For you to do this, you have to quit the app, go to the settings, and then search for camera. And once you find camera, you go inside and activate grid or change the video format. So you can see how many steps I had to go through to do this task. While on Android, I can simply open the camera and go to the camera app settings, do everything I want, and I'm back inside the camera in a second. Number three, the phone app on iOS doesn't support online search. So for example, if I want to locate the number of a specific restaurant, I will not be able to do this from within the phone app, but I have to open Safari and use Google search to get the number. While on Android, I can simply type the name of the business. And here I have the restaurant I want to call. I can tap on the call button and I'm done. Point number four and the last one is the lack of integration with other operating systems. For example, if you want to use AirDrop with a Windows PC, you cannot do this because it's only for Apple users. In contrast, nearby share on Android, which is the equivalent to AirDrop, can be used with Windows using a companion app. And even when they gave access to FaceTime to everyone else, they made it through the web. They didn't even bother to create an app to give you a better experience. Apple is also refusing to support RCS messaging, which will allow Android and iOS users to text each other seamlessly. The only Apple app you can get on Android is Apple Music. And when you think about it, you'll see that Apple Music is a paid service, and this will allow them to make more money from Android users. But any free feature they have on iOS, they keep it only for the Apple ecosystem. In contrast, most of the free services offered by Google, you can get them on iOS by downloading Google app and get access to Google Assistant or Google Lens. You can download Google Meet for video calling and so on. So I hope Apple will change this mindset in the future. So these are the main reasons why I chose Android over iOS. But this doesn't mean that Android is better in everything. You might find other features on iOS that are better than Android and vice versa. But these are the most important things I do every day on my phone. And I found Android to do them better. So please let me know in the comments if you agree with me or you have a different point of view. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you the next video.